Dr. Kyung Hoon Lee has graduated from Seoul National University and he has done internship and residency at the same university now. He's now the associate professor at Seoul National University. Could you please begin? Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm very happy to meet all of you, and it's also very great that I can speak in English as I present. So today I would like to introduce uh, to you about chemotherapy. Now, since this is a survivor session, I think a lot of you might have already gone through uh, chemotherapy. But I do, I do think there are a lot of you who hasn't gone through chemotherapy as well and who are not the direct uh, 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 patient. Now, in chemotherapy, that's uh, conducted in order to prevent recurrence after surgery. Sometimes uh, chemo is done before surgery. Anyways, uh, chemotherapy is done after and before surgery. So patients might think that a surgery would be enough and they wouldn't understand why we have to, they have to go through uh, chemotherapy. And the uh, doctor has said that surgery has, is most important. Why do we have to go through chemotherapy then? Maybe there might be any remnant cancer cells. So is that uh, the reason? Did something go wrong with my surgery? That Those are the things that would come to mind of the patients. I think that's, uh, that would come as a question for them. And also, uh, patients are fearful because there would be many toxicity. And if you look at TV shows, uh, you see the patients go through loss of hair, nausea, and menopause. So they would be worried. They would have to go through those kind of adverse events. Uh, do we have to go through uh, the chemotherapy session? Why do we need uh, chemotherapy? Maybe a targeted therapy and hormone therapy could be enough. I think uh, these are are uh, the questions that, that would come to their minds. But then uh, those are the questions that I would think about. And then I also, th uh, I also wonder what is the difference between common cold and cancer? So um, I would like to go um, to go and ask this uh, to each and every patient, but um, well, the difference is that uh, the common cold can uh, uh, go well and go away in just two weeks, but cancer remains for a long time. If you just leave the cancer alone, then it will become malignant and things will exacerbate and people can die. So it's a very fearful and scary uh, disease. And a uh, common cold happens because of virus. And COVID-19 is also uh, the reason the cause for COVID-19 is a uh, virus, but cancer is different. It's not because you ate burnt food, that's because you get cancer. There may be very many reasons. Well, um, smoking could be one of the cause. However, smoking is not the only uh, definitive reason for causing cancer. Oh. And in terms of medications, uh, is there uh, medications for common cold? Well, well, for AIDS and coronavirus, we do have uh, medications to uh, overcome these diseases. For cancer, there are uh, medications. Sometimes uh, there are uh, medications that could completely cure cancer. For common cold, um, we cannot say that there is a targeted uh, medication. And common cold uh, happens on our throats. So it's uh, confined to a certain area of our body, but cancer affects our whole body. So there are a lot of differences between common cold and cancer. So what I'm trying to say is that these are all related to drugs and medications. So when we are thinking about medications and agents to cure cancer, these are the kind of logic that we come to think. Well, I'm not going to go through the details. Well, as we talk about the differences between common cold and cancer, we have to also think about uh, our normal uh, healthy states and the cancer. But it's quite difficult to um, explain the differences in terms of biology. But then we have to know the differences so that we can target those differences and kill cancer. Virus is not something that resides on our healthy body. So, um, so 
maybe if we can target that uh, characteristic of uh, the virus, then we can resolve it. For cancer, the cell uh, could go wrong and it could grow into a cancer, so we can target that. So, well, the medication actually is difficult to come up with to target the cancer as cells. Well, then, but how, however, we can think about the features of cancer cells, and those may be as follows. First, uh, cancer cells grow rapidly. Uh, the cell divides very fast, and it's faster than how the normal cells divide. So if we uh, kill the rapidly uh, dividing cells, then we uh, the, the cancer cells would be degraded, then we can kill the cancer cells. Well, maybe that could be the right reason, right rationale. So, however, the normal cells are also dividing. So even if we uh, uh, caused uh, some damage to the normal healthy cells, if we could kill the cancer cells, maybe if we kill the cancer cells faster, then that could be good. So but then there's not a clear line between uh, the normal healthy cells and the cancer cells. If we could achieve that, then uh, we could come up with an effective drug. However, that's not the case. But still, we're trying to uh, come up with a cancer uh, medication to resolve those differences. Now, we have the traditional cancer uh, agent, cancer uh, agents and the traditional chemotherapy therapy, uh, could be also called cytotoxic chemotherapy and also it could be called chemotherapy. Chemo is using the chemistry of uh, agents. So these are the terminologies which are all very similar. So uh, these chemotherapy agents attack the dividing cells and that's the basic right mechanism. So Patients will feel uh, the medications with their own body, but then the doctors weigh these benefits and costs. Uh, there are some costs. However, uh, there are more benefits. That's the reason why the doctors prescribe chemotherapy. After surgery, let's say there was a mastectomy. So from with our eyes, uh, there might not be any visible uh, cancer cells, but still, do we have to go through this toxic chemotherapy? Still, there are uh, reasons to do so because we have to reduce recurrence and the uh, our overall survival could be lengthened. This could be very challenging and difficult for the short term, but we have to think about the long term as we uh, decide to go through chemotherapy. Especially for breast cancer, Edgevant is uh, well defined and applied. Even if you are at the first stage, chemotherapy is recommended. Because even at the first stage, there are a high possibility and probability that uh, the cells could have metastasized to other organs. So at the uh, first stage, there could be a very small tumor and there's no uh, cancer cells at the axilla and it's not palpable. And it may feel that uh, the surgery would be enough. However, even in that case, sometimes and in many cases, uh, around 50% of the cases, the cancer cells could have been metastasized to other organs. So in that case, we don't use just one uh, chemotherapy agent. We use a combination of uh, agents in order to kill cells wherever there are, cancer cells wherever there are. So this is very toxic. So. Um, the, from the patient's perspective, they have gone through surgery, and I heard that the cancer cells were all uh, eliminated and, and uh, eradicated, but still the doctor recommends them to go through chemotherapy, and that's because uh, the doctor wants to prevent recurrence. So uh, the assistance to 
surgery would be very enough. So that's why we call uh, this chem uh, chemotherapy adjuvant. And sometimes we call that neoadjuvant as well when it comes before uh, surgery. And then we also have palliative uh, chemotherapy. When there are confirmed metastasis, then uh, chemo it alone when enough will not be enough. So in the fourth stage, and if there is recurrence, then an adjuvant will be uh, applied. This is to reduce the symptoms, and the goal is not to completely cure cancer because that's not possible in that stage. So. It's a palliative uh, treatment. This is to um, reduce the symptoms, even if it's for the short term. So as I've said, adjuvant is done after surgery, and it's to decrease recurrence, because recurrence should not happen. Uh, for breast cancer especially, uh, recurrence is not good. So to decrease recurrence, uh, the adjuvant chemotherapy is applied. Of course, there are many cases when uh, chemo uh, uh, breast cancer is completely cured, but sometimes uh, there are recurrences. So when there are um, some not good uh, herbs, then we have to uh, eliminate them. So we uh, put pesticides. So just like that, uh, we are uh, applying chemotherapy. As time goes by, these um, um, not so good grasses will grow. So to eradicate these uh, bad herbs, we have to eradicate them with pesticides. So that's the mechanism that we use when we apply and prescribe chemotherapy. So hormone therapy and chemotherapy are applied in uh, that sense. So this is to reduce recurrence. And we could add hormone therapy and radiotherapy and targeted therapy to chemotherapy. So I'm not saying that uh, the numbers will be exactly the same, as you can see from this slide. Anyways, we have this one case. Uh, this is age 25 patient. And the uh, tumor size is 1.1 to 2 centimeters. And there are hormonal therapy. Uh, this is a very young patient. And this is a stage 1 case. Uh, so in under this simulation, if you just go through surgery alone, then uh, there will be recurrence. And uh, we have to do hormonal therapy. And if we don't go through hormonal therapy and do chemotherapy alone, then there will be 12%. Um, and so if you look at this, then if you do chemotherapy and uh, hormone therapy together, then we can reduce 50% of recurrence. So that's the reason why we are going through a chemotherapy. Let's look at uh, age 65 patient. We can see that the tumor size is 1.1 and 2 uh, centimeter and is, and is hormone uh, receptor positive. And if you do uh, hormonal therapy alone, then 8 out of 100 women will be alive. And if we do chemotherapy, 2 out of 100 women will be alive. But if we do combined therapy, then 10 out of 100 women would be alive. So that's the reason why we cannot uh, discard uh, chemotherapy. So I think that uh, if the probability goes up, then uh, people will decide to go through. Two to three percent people will be uh, weighing uh, the cost and benefits. But then uh, from the doctor's perspective, uh, two to three percent um, is also a large number for them. They would go through chemotherapy. In order to save the two percent of the uh, patients, um, people would like to go through chemotherapies. There may be or may not be recurrence, but still they would like to reduce recurrence. So doctors would like to recommend uh, chemotherapy. So if you go to chemotherapy, the recurrence would reduce. So for breast cancer, chemotherapy is well known uh, to reduce recurrence. Um, 
and because of chemotherapy, the patients will wonder that uh, there will be too much uh, challenge and they might die of uh, the side effects of chemotherapy. But still, cons even considering that, chemotherapy would be better. Um, and if there is lim lymph node involvement in the axillary, then uh, chemotherapy is recommended. And if there isn't a uh, lymph node in the axillary, still, if the tumor is uh, larger than one centimeter, and if uh, if the patient is young age, then we have to think about chemotherapy. And if uh, negative for hormone receptor, chemotherapy as well. So traditionally, we have been looking at the tumor size and age, but then now we go through many factors as well. There are many um, screening methods, and that helps uh, reduce the recurrence rate. And um, so if there are a higher recurrence rate, then uh, chemotherapy is a must. But for those who go through those screening and the recurrence rate would not be high, then maybe we could go, uh, skip chemotherapy. So we can see the sc recurrence score. And the size could be uh, reduced, and for that, we go through neoadjuvant chemotherapy before surgery. And if uh, the patient is at the fourth stage, then palliative chemotherapy would be applied. And then these are just simple questions. So um, these are adjuvants are done. Uh, before and after uh, the surgery, and there's a def defined time period that we apply chemotherapy. And within that defined period, we have to prove the efficacy. And we also compare between um, the uh, long period and the short duration and the long duration, and then we come up with uh, the uh, appropriate duration. So we apply this for three to six months for chemotherapy and for metastasic uh, breast cancer, we cannot define a certain uh, duration. And as you are aware, the interval would be three to four weeks. And as you are well aware, there would be toxicities of chemotherapy. Uh, there would be hair loss and nausea um, for breast cancer as well. There are side effects such as hair loss and nausea. That happens because normal cells are also affected. There aren't any agents that do not touch normal cells at all. So there would be also benefits, but costs as well. So of course there are costs, but because we have to experience benefits, we are applying chemotherapy. There are acute toxicity such as loss of appetite, nausea, diarrhea, and infection, and so on. And for, for mid to long term, there are loss of hair, so you might have to cover your head. And in most cases, if you stop uh, and complete the chemotherapy, then your hair will grow again. And there are chronic side effects as well. For a few, for a few number of patients, heart failure may occur. And for uh, some premenopause patients, uh, after uh, chemotherapy, menopause could um, occur. And there could be kidney failure or lung failure as well. These are chronic side effects. And last but not least, well, there isn't any uh, agents that could have zero risk. That uh, exists only in your imagination. So there are always risks. But on the other end of that spectrum, there are benefits as well. And the risks and benefits would be different from patient to patient. So uh, that's why uh, the expert, the doctors, would come in and decide and recommend uh, the right medication to you. Now, so I have gone through this overview, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.